Chukin Yimarin Koche, the abbot of one of the numerous monasteries in Bhutanath, was still a child when he had to escape from Tibet. Rinpoche is the title of a recognized incarnation within a traditional lineage and means precious jewel. In 1959, the Communist Chinese took over Tibet and declared it Chinese territory. 1.2 million Tibetans were killed, and 85,000 Tibetans, among them the Dalai Lama and the highest spiritual teachers, escaped over the Himalayan passes to the neighboring countries India, Bhutan, and Nepal. The Buddha and uh, Pema Sambhava. There is an old Tibetan prophecy uh, based on Buddha and Patasambhava. It says when the iron bird is flying, Tibet will say, die. Uh, if many future, monasteries are built around the sacred stupa of Bhagnat, Tibetan many tradition will have a chance of survival. And then Today there are about will, uh, 20 monasteries uh, and more are under construction. Go to other many countries and it helped to many people's mental peace. The monasteries are the core of the tradition. Without the monasteries, Tibet's spiritual tradition would not be able to survive. This is the uh, second generation of Tibetan in exile. This is already and the second monks, generation have... of Tibetans in exile. The monasteries are filled, especially with children, many of whom have lost one or both parents, children from broken homes. Many came here at their own request. A few were brought here by their parents who smuggled them out of Tibet in order to provide them with a proper Buddhist education. Southeast Asia. From the Buddhist point of view, this spiritual education is much more important than material comfort. People from Southeast Asia began to copy the Western fascination with material things. But let's be honest. When we take a closer look, this preoccupation with material goods is no source of spiritual tranquility. We need to be able to use material things like TV, cars, and so on without being obsessed with them. If we can keep our fascination within bounds, material things will not harm us, but this depends totally upon the individual. Once upon a time, there was a little boy. There was a little boy. His name was Hans. His name was Hans. And he lived in a country called Germany. Within the context of the East-West confrontation, the monasteries in exile are faced with such decisions as whether or not to include the English language in their school curriculum. Not all the others agree on this issue. Once upon a time, once upon a time, there was a little boy. His name was Hans, and he lived in a country called Germany.
Some children make up their own minds without waiting for the authorities. Little Germa taught himself a bit of English without any instruction, just by paying attention and listening. I got my finger. I think we are a crown. He is crossing the road. Latecomers get scolded in the east as in the west. A basic idea of all Buddhist teaching is liberation from suffering and the development of a deep compassion for all sentient beings. These teachings, along with reading and writing, are the basic subjects in the monastic school. Learning means learning by heart, and this is done with plenty of vocal effort. type was developed from the Indian characters in the 7th century. It is brilliantly carved out of wood blocks. The books are produced in the monastery's print shop, according to traditional methods. Eric Kunsang, the Western translator, has his office next door. It's equipped with a laptop and a laser printer. are especially happy to live in the monastery because Jigmis, Sanam and Sherab have all lost a parent and their families are desperately poor. Their brothers and sisters work as day laborers or in carpet factories. The monastic environment provides the protection which enables these children to play so unperturbed. Some of the children are supported by Western sponsors. The monasteries depend heavily on these donations as the parents are unable to contribute as they used to in old Tibet. <laughs> the monastery's most important task is Buddhist education. They are, however, also responsible for passing on such old cultural traditions as tanka painting and poetry. 
Another subject is training for the sacred dances. Chucky Nima Rinpoche's brother, Chukling Rinpoche, is a well-known dancing master. He is a married High Lama who lives with his family in his brother's monastery. Chukling Rinpoche's eldest son is also a High Tulku and is receiving a traditional education in the monastery. The other two children go to a public kindergarten. Tulku is the term for a recognized reincarnation. A married Lama is nothing special. Lama means spiritual teacher and is a title acquired by completing certain studies plus a three-year period of silent meditation in isolation. A Lama is allowed to wear the red robe whether or not he or she has taken the celibacy vows. The sacred dances are part of the contemplative practice and are performed on major religious holidays. Here, Chukling Rinpoche shows us a dance sequence of one of the wrathful protectors who personifies the spiritual energy which provides protection from negative states of mind. that whoever witnesses the sacred dances will be freed from disease, negative circumstances, and the evil influence of demonic forces. Not only do the dancers personify the wisdom energies they embody, they also activate them. When you perform the sacred dance, you must raise your arms gracefully, lift your leg up high, keep your shoulder extended like a vulture's wings. When you turn around, you must maintain a dignified air. These are the characteristics of the dance step. Raise the arms high, Turn around clockwise, lift your leg up high, and lift your arms like this. This is how you make the characteristics of the dance step visible and impressive. The gates of the Tibetan monastery are open day and night. Children and young monks are free to stroll around in their leisure time. According to Chukyi Nima Rinpoche, traditional education should enable the young monks to develop their own ability to evaluate entertainment.
football stadium. Air India versus Lufthansa. This is doubtless where we'll find the young monastery residents this afternoon. Everyone comes back to the monastery for the daily puja, the Tibetan Buddhist service. Chants and sacred words, mantras, and the sacred sounds serve as an evocation of the spiritual energies intrinsic to the human soul. Visible from the stupa is Nagi Gompa, the convent where Tulku Urgin lives. Some of his Western students also live up here. 
Seventy-year-old Tunku Urgyen Rinpoche is one of the last great meditation masters of old Tibet still living. He is the incarnation of the founder of Tibetan Buddhism, Padmasambhava, and thus also a very special teacher for the nuns. What is called the enlightened essence is present in everyone, as well as in Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and there is no difference between male or female. Because of that, in the past ages and in the present day, both males and females have attained enlightenment. Women who are full-fledged Buddhist practitioners and female enlightened beings are called yoginis. Many of them were well known for performing miracles. Yudron is a yogini even though she isn't performing any miracles. The center of her life is Buddhist practice. One of the meditative practices is the mandala offering with rice. Its purpose is to evoke the power and radiance of the wish for the happiness and inner liberation of all sentient beings. When someone recognizes his or her enlightened essence and awakens to it fully, allowing enlightenment to occur, then that person is able to display such miraculous powers as flying through the air or passing freely through solid matter. We may wonder where do these powers come from? The answer is that these powers are intrinsic in our enlightened essence itself. We rely on three main things to realize our enlightened essence. First, the precious Buddha, who was the first primal teacher who showed it to others. Then, the precious Dharma, which is the teaching of how to accomplish this feat. And then, the precious Sangha, the people who follow these teachings, uphold them, and bring them to others. If I were to tell you all about the past individuals, male and female, who put their own enlightened essence into practice, thus distinguishing themselves, it would take much more time than we have. This is not just an old fable, it actually happened. Some great masters in the past joined together with 400 of their most dedicated students and flew through the air to the hill where the sun's first rays landed, returning again at nightfall to witness the final rays of the sun. They would fly to the other side of the mountain, and when they landed, all of them left their footprints in the solid rock. And this is not just a folk tale we can actually go see these footprints.
In the thousand years from Padna Sambhava's departure from this world until the present day, many of his representatives, called the treasure revealers, appeared, each of them with incredible miraculous powers. They could fly, they could pass freely through solid matter. There is a saying in Eastern Tibet that eloquent words can emerge from the mouth of an idiot. So even though I'm old and silly, intelligent people who hear this will still be able to understand. And whatever I may have told you, I make no pretense of being learned or enlightened, which I'm not. Still, I have not told a single lie. I wish I had taken advantage of my chance to stay close to the side of my guru, Chitsin Rinpoche. I have spared myself so much suffering. She was an enlightened being, but I was so young and foolish. And though I received a very good education in Shuksep Monastery, I didn't practice the Dharma from my heart. I left the country. And when the Chinese took over Tibet, I escaped to India. I got married and gave birth to my two sons. Times were very rough after that. Only my Dharma practice supported me, and I raised my sons who both became lamas in this sense. I wish and hope that all human beings will be able to practice the Buddha's teachings, so that all do good unto each other and cause no harm, especially all those who watch this film. <laughs> dance their sacred shirt dance, a special meditative practice. Usually this dance is performed on certain festival days.
courtyards are still places where both Buddhists and Hindus perform their devotional rites. and Hindus also share the custom of cremating the dead at the ghats, which are cremation sites on the riverside. In old Tibet, the charnel grounds were considered especially appropriate for meditation practice. They most clearly represented the principle of the inseparability of life and death. anxieties are the unleashing impulses oscillating between hope and fear. They have their source in the ultimate fear of death, and the reconciliation with impermanence and death is the basis of a happy life. Beneath the stupa's eyes, all the faithful wish happiness to all beings. Lama Tenpai brought little caged birds to give them the happiness of freedom. Lama Tenpai is an example of how the Tibetan Lamas refused to be discouraged in exile. Aided by foreign donations, he is building his model project, a senior citizen's home called Happy End, near the stupa. In accordance with tradition, the beginning of construction work is celebrated with a fire puja to invoke all the protecting and supporting energies to benefit this project. We always think about the young, the Lama says. But isn't it just as important to end one's life in a good and noble fashion, just as we should begin it? Learning how to live also means learning how to die. This is an important aspect of Buddhist teaching. There is nothing exotic about this teaching. On the contrary, it is very immediate, and every human being in East and West is able to understand it. Thank you. 
The Rinpoche of a monastery has many functions. One of them is to be a spiritual teacher and advisor. His door is open to Western visitors as well. Just advice on coping with uh, fear. Yeah. Like I'm going to India, mm -hmm. and uh, I find many, like many fears arising. Right. So there are reasons what we need to say each other. Take it easy, and relax. So that means calm down. Yeah. Don't be the ang don't don't angry much. Mm. Huh? Meaning is there, right? Yes. Are very nice words, but meaning is there. Yeah. Also, Buddha not say more than that. Buddha says, relax. Mm. The totally relaxing is meditation. Monk. Well, it's uh, it's still like there must be some wisdom there if you place yourself into a. Um, a difficult situation, mm -hmm. or you perceive it as a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. So this all, all base, if we know how to totally and mentally relax, mm -hmm. and really we know proper meditation. Mm -hmm. You can come, okay. 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 While the Western visitor has come here in quest of enlightenment in a general sense, this native couple seeks comfort in a quite specific problem. The young wife's brother had been killed in a fall from a horse. In her sorrow and despair, as I mentioned before, until a dualistic fixation, the mind that fixates on duality falls apart. There is something to avoid, there is something to adopt, there is necessary to avoid and adopt. At the annual seminar Chirki Nimar in holds for his foreign students, we can find all nationalities. In this country of trekking tourism, one of the poorest lands on earth, these people want to ascend to the inner Himalayas, viewing it as the realization of the inherent human potential, wisdom, and compassion. In order to understand or realize the correct view, we must attain enlightenment. In order to attain enlightenment, we must follow the correct path. These seminars bring in a little income. However, the survival of the monasteries depends mostly on the generosity of foreign sponsors. What we should avoid and what we should adopt is like this. Gumba di nala gindu bajja sala jiyavare o ti chowa tiyang it was suggested that the monasteries should go into business. But the fact is, people involved in business get distracted from studying and meditation. Moreover, the Buddha said monks should curtail all earthly activities, which includes commerce. And the Buddha also said, the person who supports a spiritual practitioner acquires enormous merit. The Tibetans in Nepal are strangers in a strange land, officially Chinese nationals, in reality refugees in exile, homeless people with an open political status. But the Tibetans aren't giving up their religious culture. Beneath the stupa's eyes, the Tibetan Buddhists in exile unfold their special spiritual power, the power of confident uncertainty. 
First, what I, I would like to tell you, that which is called the enlightened essence is present in everyone as well as Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. It permeates all of samsara and nirvana. Entschuldigung, dann wusste ich dann, dann ich habe dann große Schwierigkeiten. Da, I, come on. Come on. That enlightened essence is present throughout all sentient beings without any exception. And this enlightened essence, there is no difference uh, as to being male or female. It is not that a male uh, have the enlightened essence and female not. And because of that, in in past ages up until now, many male beings have attained in enlightenment, have awakened to this enli enlightened essence, as well as many female beings. The female enlightened beings are then called yogini. Yogini means someone who can move freely and display miracles through space. Uh, the Tibetan word is kan dro. Ka means space and dro means to move freely and display miracles. When someone recognizes his or her enlightened essence, attains stability in that and awakens to it fully and it thereby is enlightened, then such a person is able to display mi miraculous powers such as flying through the, the sky or traverse freely through solid matter. So we may ha wonder where do these powers come from? And the answer is that these are powers that are intrinsic to our enlightened essence itself. In order for us to realize our, and awaken to our enlightened essence, what is it we rely on? We rely on three main things called the Precious Buddha, which is the first and primal teacher to, to show it to others. Then the Precious Dharma, which is the teachings of how to do that. And the Precious Sangha, the people who follow those teachings, who main, 
uphold them and to uh, spread them to others. There are also what is called the three roots, the Guru who is the root of blessings, the Yidam who is the root of accomplishment, and the Dakini, the Yuginis, who are the root of activities. These possess what is called the wisdom of the all-knowing wisdom, the all-embracing compassion, and the activity of deeds for the benefit of others. As well as the capacity to protect and save others. If I were to tell you about all the people in the past, male as well as female, who put into practice the experience of the, our own enlightened essence and thereby attained accomplishment, it would take a tremendous long time, which we don't have. This is not just an old story, but it actually happened that some great masters in the past, together with 400 of their close students, all together flew uh, in the sky uh, to the hill where the sun would uh, strike its first rays. And then at night time, to catch the last rays of the sun, they would fly to the hill at the other side of the mountain. And when they landed, all of them left footprints in solid rock. And this is not just a fairy tale. We can actually go and see these these prints. <laughs> I myself went and saw these prints when I was small, so I have confidence that it's not just a story. Moreover, in India in the past, there were 80 great uh, accomplished beings called the Mahasiddhas, and not a single of them left a normal corpse behind when they passed away. In that very body, they departed to other realms called Pure Lands. In this country, Nepal, an incredible great number of accomplished male and female people appeared in the past. In Tibet, there was Padmasambhava and his 25 close students, both male and female, and not more than one left a normal corpse behind. All the others uh, departed from this world in what is called the rainbow body. Padmasambhava himself, who, whose name means the lotus-born one, because he was born without a father and without a mother, from within the part of a lotus flower, he left this world in a place called the Gongtang Pass, which is uh, at the border between Nepal and Tibet. 
and escorted by the Dakinis and Yukinis of the four families, he uh, flew to his pure land called the glorious copper colored mountain. In the thousand years from his departure from this world until now, many of his representatives called treasure revealers or Tatan have appeared, each of one with incredible miraculous powers. They could fly, they could go freely through solid matter, and they revealed uh, Dharma teachings in order to benefit the beings uh, at their specific time. Many such people appeared. In all the other schools of Tibetan Buddhism, such as the Kagyu, Sakya and Kiluk, also a great number of accomplished men as well as women have appeared during the ages and centuries. Just 40 years ago, um, one student of uh, Rosa Palke attained rainbow body when he uh, passed away. And also in central Tibet, in the province of Tsang, recently one nun uh, passed away in what is called the rainbow body. To speak more recent of recent affairs, I myself in this lifetime have met three great Yukinians. When we look at them, at such people at first glance, they look like just normal human beings. But when you start to get closer to their spiritual qualities, then you feel that uh, I had the feeling that uh, they were totally free from any fear, from any personal misery or pain and whoever they were with wherever they went they were always uh, in a delightful spirit and uh, never in disharmony with anyone when we experience our enlightened essence and apply that in practice we achieve enlightenment and enlighten the state of enlightenment knows no difference to male or female in my very lifetime, I know of many, many people who attained such an enlightened state. It is not an ancient tale or a mythological story. It actually does happen when we place uh, the oral instructions into our own uh, practical experience, the attainment of enlightenment is in indeed possible. It's not just a fairy tale. And 
When re- relating oneself to the teachings of the Buddha, we do have some doubts and some, some suspicion, and we should not leave it with that. It's very important to use. Uh, some perfect measure for what is valid and what is not genuine and remember uh, teachers have mentioned that there are four types of measure that that we should use one is the measure of the words of a perfectly enlightened being such as the Buddha whose uh, statements uh, are never false then there are the teachings given by the great ma- masters of the lineage as well as those of the gurus from one to the other passed uh, down on, until my own root teacher himself but not only that we need to apply the perfect measure of our own intelligence to deser- decide exactly what is true and what is not true we should not leave h- anything with just um, blind faith or just mere belief but we need to examine for ourselves what is really tr- correct mm-hmm. All the misery and pain that living beings experience in the state of samsara, the confusion, the bewilderment, what is the reason for that? It is nothing other than lacking the experience of our enlightened essence. If we totally ignore and neglect what is primordially and continually present with ourself, this enlightened essence, and instead chase after illusory aims and involve ourselves in confused emotions, then we'll just go on and on endlessly in deluded experience called samsara, which we have done for countless lifetimes, life after life, death and then rebirth. And unless now we take this opportunity of being a human to realize what we is fully possible, then in the future too we will just continue in that same way. The enlightened essence is present in everyone. Nobody, not even a single person in this world, lacks it or is without it. But unless in our personal experience we know how to apply it, how to practice that, and and realize it, then we'll just remain in confusion and continue like that. 
And that confusion does not, never disappear just by itself. Spinning around on the rim of the vicious circle of samsara on what is called the twelve links of dependent origination then we continue life after life we die reborn and we die again countless times which we have done in the past <laughs> But if in this very lifetime we can learn how to experience and realize our enlightened essence, then right now, before we pass away, we can attain the perfectly and fully awakened state of a Buddha. <laughs> The method to transform this human body into rainbow light at the moment of death is only through recognizing and realizing our enlightened essence. There's no other way in this world possible to do that. And the instruction, the method of how to do that is still available. We need to place our trust in the three jewels, precious Buddha, precious Dharma and precious Sangha and receive this teaching from someone who holds an unbroken lineage and this lineage is still intact. Otherwise, there is nobody in this world who will not die. There is no exception. In the past, everyone who lived here died. Right now, everyone alive will die. Everyone born in the future will have to die too. Everything changes in the world. Nothing remains the same. Nothing is permanent. Nothing lasts. So, if we want to be successful, if we really want to take care of ourselves, we should realize our enlightened essence. There's one saying in, in Eastern Tibet that eloquent words can come out of the, the mouth of an idiot. So even though Rinpoche is old and silly, still intelligent people who hear this will be able to understand. In what I have told you, I make no pretense of being learned or realized, which I, also which I am not, but still I have not said a single lie. And yet, even though my words are silly, if you have discernment and intelligence, you will understand everything I said.
마침 그를 놓친 등 해시고 말이다. 강아 사마 그더니 독장 뭐 도산 혼탄 제게 말이지 않았다고 그를 놓친 등 닥터님이 와 강해 징을 있어. If I were to speak more about the affairs of uh, this life, you, the listener, would be no more than my than myself. There's um, not not nothing that I can add to your own experience. There is a sad fact of this life, which is unavoidable, and that is that whoever meet together will have to part. Whatever we gather gets spent and disappear. Whatever we build up sooner or later falls apart, and whoever is born also will die. And yet, we aim at having good food, having money, nice clothes, and a good reputation. When we leave this world, the food we and money we have hoarded up is just left behind with our clothes. And our reputation and good name is worth nothing more than the echo of thunder in the sky. When we proceed from this life in the intermediate state called the after death, then there will be no one to congratulate us with the reputation that we have built up in this lifetime. No, we, we have to to get because the tape is over. Check it. Kind of call it the so, willst du noch was sagen?